right? Okay. Now this guy is two point two. I
I can add some more terms here. X cube double, and we both are for sine of x or cosine of x, and this is what happens. So if you if you understand it here, I teach you the methodology how to do it. In examination, I cannot tell it. What will I write there in the question? But it will be some of this. Okay. So therefore, you learn the method how to do it. Okay. So if you are given such a problem, maybe a, a sine or maybe cosine, okay, of x or dx or whatever. Okay. All right. All right. Now, how do you solve this? So how do you do it? Now you know that if you want to discuss evaluate the dynamics given by the operator of the theory, you work in the high number representation. So you assume they can be time Okay? And then you know the eigenvalue equation of motion. So for example, you write down that I have a cross that d is of x divided by dt. A that I have to be here, I can cross so A of H and F of H plus D of H DT. Okay. That's an ideal work equation of motion. Now I will write this equation for D of H. Let us say x of x or <coughs> g of x. I can have more x's here. I can say q or q1 or q2. Okay? If I have q1, q2, then I have p1, p2. So I can just construct doubt without looking into any book. I can just construct the problem for a class of problems. If you understand how to do it, you can do it. Okay? Alright? So now determine etc. any of p. So you only need to know the quantities and relations of this operator if the Hamiltonian Hamiltonian is given to you. Hamiltonian is given to you and you, you can know all the operators involved in the theory. So all, all q's, all p's. Okay? Alright? And you know the x as a given. So you only need to know the quantities and relations of the a, B, C, that would be your A, B, C, plus B, C. Okay. Similarly, you can write A, B, to C, to develop it yourself. Okay, they are given in the book and develop them yourself. Okay, if you, if you are ready, if you don't like at all, then I am not responsible. Okay. So, like, if I have X, x of n, for example, p of x, or p square of x, okay, so p square, okay, then you know that you can apply the formula and then use the fundamental relations, the fundamental fundamental relations of x and p, you want the p1, q2, q2, etc., etc., you want the q2, so use all the fundamental communication relations and then you can determine the right hand side of the situation. If there is no time and there is a time dependent, then this term will go to zero. And so this would be used so for example for a three particle you can very easily see. Uh, could I could I erase this? You can just 
see, imagine in your mind, here, uh, here it's P versus P squared. 3 B A C. Yes. Or it is a relation of P with P squared will be 0. 3 B A C will be 0. This one? Sir, it's up. The first term will be B A C. So, it's in front of it.
drawn in the operators because they will be the time. Okay? So for our time, so this is how we determine, supposing you were doing a one dimensional arm approximator to improve this to curve and to also improve this curve here, this by general consideration, but this part of the three part, you can get the potential in a three part, you can put it here. But then you can also determine one dimensional arm of the oscillator, the potential is one half and when x square, x square, and then you can find out again similar equations, whatever they look like. Okay, you, you do them yourself and then you would find the net determinants and you the return. So you have uh, f x dot is just the same v f by n and the equation for v is now different. So d uh, t by d t this is then equal to minus n mega square f of n So you put these things yes, minus n mega square f of n you can solve these things and as usual you will find f dot dot which is you know uh, for article operator plus plus your mega square f of x will be 0, okay? So this kind of equation you will, what you, you determine to first of all equations with what I think that equations of motion are first of all equations of motion. If you like, indeed, you can try to see what kind of equation you get. You can ignore that you can put it in the other, and you get it like this. You can solve if its solution should be sine and cosine, along with some some constant, some constant okay? of sine of something plus b into cosine of something, then go back to the initial conditions at time b equal to zero and find them out. So the constants will be determined. Alright? So put this thing back and then you know the solution of the one dimensional harmonic oscillator. For example, if I like I could construct a large class of problems. I just need to change my edge. Uh, okay, in principle as a physicist, one would define a Lagrangian and then you, you find out the canonical moment that put them back to the region of transformation to construct the Hamiltonian. Okay, but to simplify those things and keep them in the same I can just give you the directions of Hamiltonian. Okay, and I can say, okay, the Hamiltonian operator is defined as this. So you can assume that I have already done that exercise in my mind and I just give you this. But from there you can see how many Q's and how many P's are involved in defining the Hamiltonian of the system. Okay, and you have to determine these equations of motion and the equations of motion for each Q and each P. Okay, just in this method. And you have to use the fundamental commutation relations, which means what are the fundamental commutation relations? X i p j is delta i j. Okay. Qi qj is 0, Qi qj is 0. So these are the, these are the fundamental commutation relations. I have given you the derivation of these commutation relations based on classical mechanics. You can play the force of practice of the theory and then replace them by the corresponding commutation relations to the graph one dimension rules. And then you know that the commutation relations are obeyed by the theory. So use those commutation relations, fundamental commutation relations here. In order to investigate the dynamics of inference, but you can determine the dynamics of this. Okay. Uh, I'm not illustrating any any uh, problems here in the class of nature of what you have approach because you have done plenty of them already. Okay. By now you, you have been doing problem equation quite a lot, I suppose. Am I right? Yes, so so but this must be new for you. Okay. So so alright. And if you need two more minutes, I can add a few more to it. Or if you like, I can do it next time. Next time, okay. So, there is one formula called the Baker House Clock formula. Or Baker House Clock lemma, which needs to be. So, uh, at least that you mention the line so that you, it's not looking into the, into the literature. But supposing I have F of 